for this adventure into programming, we're going to do web scraping. Web scraping. This is where you get information from the web and turn it into essentially a table of data. And this is an incredibly powerful tool to use uh, to enable the automation of tasks. These tasks could be things like grabbing uh, events for your calendar from websites or uh, uh, looking for houses in the house market, trying to grab information. You could essentially extract analytical data, finance data, categorical data, anything you need. Um, anything essentially that can be presented on a web page can be grabbed. Sometimes it might be a little bit more difficult, but often you can still get it. But I must be aware, sometimes it's illegal. And there's a number of ways that people can block uh, web scraping. But we'll blazingly go where everyone else has gone and web scrape anyway and just keep it to ourselves. And so you can see in a great Wikipedia way, there's a bunch of ways to do this. You can just copy and paste. So we could go to our website and I've just chosen Jora. You can type in engineer, go search. It'll chug away for a while, and then it'll come back and say, oh, here's some engineers, and they're all in Australia. You can just go copy and paste, and you'll be quite happy. Move right along with life. But say you want to know every hour or within an hour when the latest jobs have been released, then you need to have something more automatic. So you would use HTT programming. I should differentiate. Human copy and paste, in this case, would be let's copy out senior systems engineer, put it into our document, then RSM, RMS tech, and put it into our document. The next advance is te text and pattern matching. So you could determine from this block of text, uh, here or here, what is it that is, this text is representing. Finally, you have HTT programming, which is simply just a way to grab the information out. And you use HTML parsing to get that information. So in this example, we're going to use Python. We'll use uh, Python 3.6. And specifically, we'll use a few toolkits. We'll use, uh, in this example, uh, requests, which is a Python library and uh, Python 3.6. Now, requests is a methodology whereby you can just request data. It, it, it's really just that. Uh, let's grab uh, Python requests is HTTP for humans. It is a straightforward way to go ahead and just ask for a web page. And it's just that automation that essentially gives us HTTP programming. Now, uh, we need to do a second step, but we'll go there in a second. But oh, at least let's explain it. So we need to pass the information we download as HTTP. So why don't we start a project? We'll go new file. We'll call uh, we'll call this uh, web scraper scraper.py, and what we'll first do is go import requests. R Q E S T S. Now we can go ahead and go print uh, done. We'll always put done at the end so we can see that. Something has been completed. So we'll save that and we can debug it now. We can uh, select no configuration, but hopefully it figures out where our Python is. So we go Python, it'll whinge at us for a bit, but eventually it'll chug and say no, no module requests. Now, obviously it's because I've spelled this wrong. Let's go get it right. So requests is the module name. Let's put that there and let's run that. Python, it goes around for a bit, it'll spin its wheels, and we see that it says done. Now we just ignore these other little bits here. This is specifically to do with a misconfiguration in uh, Python on this computer. Uh, however, it makes no difference whatsoever. The other bits here, uh, a lot of text, it's essentially just Visual Studio starting Python for us. Now. Let's make something useful. So we want to go r is requests, r -E -Q -E -E, requests dot get. And now 
One interesting thing we can do here is we can press command, we press control space. Now control space will show us the get and it'll show us the documentation. So it says the URL is a parameter that we require. And you don't have to give it parameters and keyword arguments, but later on we may discuss in another video how this will be implemented, or I'll go grab an example for us. So now we want to get, and we'll just grab the web page. Jora, we'll copy here, we'll put that down, and then we'll uh, run it. Now, what we're going to do in this program is we're going to set what's called a breakpoint. This is where the Python will stop executing and allow us to inspect what the value of R is and any other variable within the system. So let's go ahead and it'll start Python and now it will run it and in a second we should have this. So we see that there's a, a yellow marker and this heart line is now highlighted. We can see there's an area called variables, an area called watch, an area called cool stack, and an area called breakpoints. This breakpoint is here on webscraper.py and workspace. We also have a tab called Problems, a tab called Output, a tab called Debug Console and Terminal. In this case, we'll switch to a Debug Console. Now, Debug Console is essentially an interactive way to interact with Python. So, for instance, we could type print hi, and it'll do exactly that, hi. Now, the reason it is interesting here, it went print hi, that's what we typed, we pressed enter, then it said none, and then it said hi. Well, let's just do an experiment here. If we go a equals print high, what happens? A is that, none, and high. Well, what was a? A is none. And what was the result? Well, it printed high. So what it's showing here is the result of whatever this line was before it. So if it's one, you have one echoed. You'll notice that there was no line after uh, one, whereas if we pressed high, you had a, a line. This is because print also has, if we oh, we'll type print here, we'll type print, you can see it has an end. End has got a default value, tack n. And this means a new line. If we instead went end equals pi, uh, the, we'll put a space and this is, this is the end of the input. We'll see that says hi, this is the end of the input. And there's no line return. If we put a tag n there, we'll have a line return. This is just a fancy pants feature if you need that kind of thing. It's typically used if you were to do CSV input. So if you were to print a, a number of things sequentially, you just put an end there and you can easily programmatically build a CSV. Now, back to the point. The value of R is a response. And so this is a type, it's a response object. We can drill down on this so we get some more information. You can see that it has something called underscore content, underscore uh, connection, content, cookies, elapsed, headers. Now it's interesting you might notice in uh, each of these there's even more values but let's focus on uh, just content. What we can do is print r.content, Con oops I press tab, content, and we can see it has a whole bunch of input. This is all HTML, and is HTML for the end of the page. But we might notice that there's some text in here. There's something called a summary. There's some text there, and then a div. Well, why don't we try and understand this a little bit more? What we can do is we can right click on the page, and we go inspect. If we close this, we can see that all these things are in here, div, something called div, and h2, and spans and stuff, and in fact, as I scroll over it, different parts of the screen is highlighted. You can see if I highlight h2, the header is highlighted. I can, in fact, I can expand h2, and I can see there's something called a here, and there's this big thing, uh, that and a link. Well, this is important information for us. What we need to find is the links. We also want to find more information about the job and store it. We want to store the fact it's a deco group. And what 
has happened here is that Jorah has placed this thing called company. And this is fantastic for later when we can easily programmatically find this. They also have location. You can see summary here and job better here. Now it's not an accident that they happen to have class job meta or class summary. The reason is because essentially they wanted to style this content. They wanted to make it look like that it that it is at the moment. If we, for instance, were able to remove the styling content, it was it would look quite uh, bland. It would all these items would be essentially somewhere on the page wherever the document decided to put them. It's only with CSS or styling that it looks as it does. And so that's both a boon for someone who's designing a website, but also a boon for someone who's trying to scrape that information as well. Because this is going to be the same summary as this. This will say summary. As much as down here, this will be indeed... Oh, this is not a summary. Uh, let's go here. No, nope, that's an ad. We can actually see their ad, sorry. This one here will be a summary. Now, this is the main point you need to re recognize, is the, the repetition. So we have class result, JRAP, job, H2, company, location, job, summary, etc. <clears throat> These look exactly the same, but you might notice something special. These all belong to something called ads. And in here, we have Jura ads, sponsored results. The class is different. It's not just result. It's result sponsored, sponsored top. It has a different kind of structure, but in overall, it's kind of similar. But importantly, we don't have to worry about this because we stop essentially when we see ads. What we can do is we can just pass. We can go up the top. We can actually figure out where this job results start. And conveniently, it's called job results. So there we are. This job results, here's the ad start there. Job results start there. So we just need to get that. And now you might recognize this as a kind of document object. It's There's some model, there's some logic to this. Well, in some cases, you would call this XML, extensible markup language. And that's essentially what HTML, it's just a regularized version of XML and a little bit more freeform. So what we can do is we'll use a Python package called LXML. We might also consider using the Python package called Beautiful Soup. Now, how do we know about these? How do we find, how do we know what they mean, etc.? Well, why don't we just grab this convenient link here? How to scrape websites with Python and Beautiful Soup. We go here, we'll get a little bit of a description, a little bit of a feeling of what these things are. Of course, we would search how to scrape websites, and we might include how to scrape websites with Python. But if you're unknown about the beautiful soup, you just leave it there. So this is going to take some time to load, uh, but we might switch back to here, and we'll also try and load up this. What we're trying to do with LXML, and what we're trying to do with beautiful soup, is HTTP passing. So let's just add that to our search term. We'll get uh, we'll go to a thing, we'll grab the tutorial for eTree tutorial. We'll probably also grab this one here, LXML, HTML. So now free code camp, uh, we have um, some instructions, some basics. So we, what we can see here is they've developed us a little HTML, but we're, we're going to go a bit further today. We'll just go down and, oh yeah, here we go, we have some just descriptions of what we can do. Now, let's grab this one here. Now, these are two different libraries. <clears throat> and they have certain use cases. And it's a fairly uh, important to make some dis dis uh, discern between the two. Um, one interesting thing, however, is that L lib LXML can use beautiful soup parser, you can see here, or HTML lib five lib parser. In fact, actually, we might just use beautiful soup. Beautiful soup is very straightforward, and we'll just go through this example here. So why don't we just go ahead. So we'll start from here, 
we'll copy this bit, we'll go over, we'll stop our code. So uh, we've we've established that we have uh, uh, downloaded our site successfully. We'll now do what we'll import beautiful soup. We we'll go import b e a u t i f u l soup, uh, and we'll make life a little bit easier. We'll import it as b s as b s b s. Now we'll pre press press soup down here. And we'll put r dot content, and we'll leave it to be HTML parser. R dot content is obviously this bit here. Now I expect to see a few errors. And this is what you would expect to see as well. <clears throat> so errors here might be that beautiful soup uh, does not exist in our Python installation. And also, idle content might be what beautiful soup expects. But you know, just something else. Beautiful soup and BS. Well, we need to go there. So this needs to match there. So let's see if this works. I don't expect it to, but let's surprise ourselves. So the first thing that happened, we have an invalidated character in this sequence. So let's just delete that bit. Let's try again. Let's run it. We'll use Python. We're seeing if it works. And we're good. Now let's see if beautiful soup imports. Yep. <clears throat> it looks like we don't have the module called beautiful soup. Let's go up and let's see. We're going to go, ah, we'll see. It's a little bit different. So let's use that line instead. We'll use, uh, oh, beautiful soup from BS4, import beautiful soup, uh, probably as BS. No, let's just, okay, we'll just use this. We'll use that way, we'll drop there. Okay, right. Let's have another crack. Now, again, We'll only learn if BS4 is in our Python if it starts properly. So we we'll do that. Yep. So we've got beautiful soup. What you can see is beautiful soup uh, contains some functions, and uh, that's all very well and good. So let's uh, let's use that. We step through that. Let's step out. Sorry. It will that just step right into that function. We don't need to step into that function. So now we have soup. <clears throat> the soup's actually, uh, we stepped past that uh, and we got the next thing we hit was our breakpoint. So we have soup. So we can type. Uh, let's see what it says. So we have uh, using the best HTML parser for the system. So it's actually using LXML. It's going to ask us that we want to use LXML. So we'll just skip that. It depends on what you want to do. So if we type soup, what do we get? We get some beautiful soup dot uh, We get some all a uh, bunch of information. We have contents, current tag, descendants, etc. Why don't we go and ask this web page? What do we need to do to find an aspect? So what we can see here is we got to find. So why don't we do this? H1 is equal to soup dot find and we type h1 let's see if that works for us none so that means it worked fine h1 is that <clears throat> so um we it looks like we have just one instance of h1 if we went to h2 we have find we have ended up with h2 and we've got that but we maybe we that what that's happening is that it's finding it and giving us a linked list. Why don't we use find all? Nope. We want to look at this again. <coughs> find 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 Excel. Let's see if we can do something a little bit better. Find div. Okay. Let's go and grab our website. This is one we want. Why don't we find, what we'll find is a div called job. So let's do that. Find a div and, oops, sorry, we should change that to div to give it a name. And we'll change that from find all to just find. And none, so that means we should can go uh, div, oops, sorry, div 
and we have uh, two divs apparently 